Hi, this is Simon Upstill. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And this is a follow-up to my recent disintegration tutorial, because some of you have been asking about how I created the matte for this effect. That's the black and white matte. In this case, it was very simple, because it was a green screen shot that looked like this. Now, I didn't use the built-in Apple Kia for reasons that I'll come on to later, but it would have done an OK job. So let's try that. Now, when we first apply the Apple Kia, nothing much happens because the green screen is very dark indeed, and the automatic algorithm can't work out what to do. So we need to sample the colour of the backing to get the key. And to do this, we need to make sure that our overlays are turned on, and also that we have enabled the original view in the Kia itself, so that we can sample the colour that we want off the backing. So I'm going to click on Sample Colour, and we'll grab this area over on the left here. So now, if we switch to the Composite view, we can see the key. But I want us to look at the matte view, because there's something we're not actually seeing that we need to be aware of. So at first glance, it looks fine. But here's a trick that all visual effects artists use to check the status of the matte. We're going to apply a color, gamma, and we'll crank the gamma value all the way to the top. This technique is what's known as gamma slamming. And what it's showing us here is that the right-hand side of the backing has not, in fact, been fully cleared, even though the matte view appears to tell us that it is. So a black and white matte view is not ideal for checking the density of a key, but some keyers do have a better solution, as we'll see shortly. OK, so at this point, you might be tempted to sample the right-hand side so as to add that area to the matte. But you really shouldn't, because you're going to lose edge detail if you do so. So the simple answer here is simply to add a mask and in this case, I'm going to use the rectangular mask. And we can discard that whole area off to the right, and we don't have to worry about keying it. And I can't stress this point enough. Whatever keyer you're using, you need to use every means possible to avoid having the keyer work too hard, because that always leads to a worse edge. So now I want you to take a look at the left-hand edge of the face. I'm sure you can see that there's a very pronounced ugly dark rim, and that's making the key look really poor. In this case, there's only one solution, and I'm afraid it's a nasty one. We're going to have to use the matte tools to shrink the matte. Now, there are two things you want to avoid at all costs when you're keying. One of them is having to blur the matte, and the other is having to shrink it. Because the problem when you shrink is that you're chewing away at everything, and in particular, you make a hideous mess of the hair and any other semi-transparent detail. So I want you to look at how the hair gets eaten away as we adjust the shrink value. There's no more obvious sign of a poor quality key. But in this case, it's the best we can do. So let's come back to how I created the two elements for the disintegration tutorial. I first of all rendered out the character keyed over my sky background. As I'm sure you can see, my sky is in a group of its own below the keyed layer. So that's Share, Export Movie, and we can use ProRes HQ for this, and let's call it Danny on Sky. Then we can come back and switch to the matte view. We'll need to turn off that sky group to just make sure it's not included in our final render. Notice that the Kia views are not just views, they're the actual output from motion. So if we render the matte view, we're actually getting that black and white matte, and that's what we need for our disintegration project. So share, export movie, and again choose ProRes HQ, and call it Danny Matte. Now it has to be said that I didn't strictly need to create a black and white element for the disintegration project, but I did so because I could more easily show you what was going on, and it's just a lot less complicated. So finally, I mentioned that instead of using the Apple Kia, I used something else. 
And that something else is Hawaii Kia, which is our own Kia plugin. Now, it's not just because I was involved in developing it, but I can confidently say that it's one of the very best Kias on the market. And it's got a host of features that most other Kias don't have, and some that no other Kias have at all. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it here, because there's an in-depth tutorial which I will link to in the comments. I'd just like you to notice that whereas the Apple Kia was limited to a black and white matte view, Hawaii Kia has a special analysis view that makes it much easier to gauge the density of the mat. And I can very simply and easily refine the key to get a perfect result. If we switch to the conventional black and white view, I hope you can see that we've got so much more fine edge detail than the Apple Kia was able to give us. Look, for example, at the eyebrow and the eyelashes, which the Apple Kia just couldn't reproduce even before we had to shrink the mat. And what about that troublesome dark fringing on the left-hand side of the face? Well, fixing that is as simple as turning on the edge replace switch. And it's taken care of the problem without any loss of edge detail. And that's not even scratching the surface of all the different edge manipulation tools there are in Hawaii Kia, along with so much more. So there you go. I hope that was useful. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.